Holy shit, everyone, it's Overwatch Halloween, and you know what that means. No, not that. Even scarier than Junkenstein's Revenge, Torbjorn got a rework. Yeah, that's right, everyone's favorite Death Dwarf has gotten a rework, and it's absolutely terrifying. Now, it's not as scary as it could have been, considering that at one point there was talk of Tor being able to build turrets with Bastion Gatling guns on the front, instead of the standard ones that they have now. But regardless, a good Torb, in other words, anyone but me, will be able to kick ass and take a fair amount of names with this new rework. So let's get right into explaining not only what his updates were, but also doing a How to Torb video in the process. Let's be when. Now, there's a lot of flavor text that goes into the actual update that they put in the patch notes, and I'm hoping that I can summarize those up for you pretty well. So let's see. Huh. Hmm. Alright, I think I got it. Everyone knows that shit's fucked, so let's find out just how fucked shit truly is. So, for starters, the best detail of this whole rework is by far that his head hit volume was reduced which is amazing because if you take it as it's supposed to mean, it means that his head got smaller, or rather that its hitbox did. And if you take it in the way that I did, means that the noises coming from his head got quieter, which they significantly did not. MOLTEN CORE! Additionally, his primary fire of the rivet gun is now faster. The reload time takes less time, and it acts as a sort of homing beacon paintball gun for the turret, in that whenever you hit an enemy with that primary fire, the turret immediately goes into automatic fuck you mode and starts to focus fire on that one specific enemy. This doesn't work if you use your secondary fire for the same gun, though. So you have to balance out which enemy you want the turret to fuck up by hitting them first with that primary fire, then with which one you want to fuck up personally. If they don't match up, you're going to have to switch to that secondary fire when attacking your own enemy. Speaking of, the secondary fire also got some interesting changes, in that its recovery time was lowered a nice little bit, but its damage also got lowered. To balance this out, the reload time got shortened, and they made it so that the randomization of the spread that it shoots out is at least somewhat more reliable. Basically, you're acting with this thing as a shotgun, well, now you're going to be penalized on damage, but at the very least you're getting a more guaranteed hit with that damage break. So, if you ask me, it evens out a little bit. The hammer is literally the same, save for them having fixed its hitbox to match up with the standard melee attack that Torb has. I'd say this makes it a small bit more reliable, but overall it's not exactly a game changer. You're not going to be running out with just your hammer trying to destroy enemies. And if you do, I promise you're going to end up spectating a lot of the round. But what is Torbjorn without his turret? The answer is nothing. Tor back before his rework was solely relying on his turret for the bulk of his damage. Not that he couldn't do it on his own, but that turret was awesome and helpful as all hells. Place it down and build it up to level 2 and have a blast until you get your old. Hell, there were times where I could have just stand on that payload dancing with my turret. I think I have a video of me doing that in bot matches somewhere. That being said, they changed the turret a fair amount, and honestly, I don't think it's entirely a bad thing. For starters, you now throw your turret, so if you're smart and skilled, you can throw it over walls and whatnot to get the drop on some enemies. Look at all that skill. On top of that, it automatically builds itself without the penalty of having different levels, while still having the level 2 turret damage output that it used to have. It's honestly really nice to just throw it out there and know that you're going to be doing a nice bit of damage, and you don't even have to be near it. Don't worry about it. Just sort of set up your turret, then go out for a nice drive around the city block and maybe kill some dudes. I promise you'll be fine, because your turret has got your back without you having to worry about it. Except that you kind of do. See, they reduce the health on the turret to 250, which means that it has all the health and damage output of a damage dealing healer with none of the mobility. Could you imagine if you were playing as soldier, but instead of his run, he just sort of got stuck there for a bit, permanently, and didn't heal himself? That's kind of the new Torb turret, so you still have to go back to it every now and then and bitch smack it with your hammer to remind it to stop being such a whiny little dick. Additionally, do you remember how before you could set up your turret, then when you wanted it to be somewhere else, you could just move that bitch and be happy? Well, that ain't happening anymore. For starters, there's a cooldown after you place it. 
which is nothing new, but you have to watch what the turret has been doing as well, because it can no longer be rebuilt if it's stuck in combat. So when it's firing, it can't be rebuilt, and it can't be rebuilt if it's been shot at within about three seconds. No quick resetting the turret position to get it out of the line of fire for you. To make it even more difficult on your poor supple turret body, if your turret gets destroyed for any reason, you have to wait a grand total of 10 seconds to throw out another one. I know that 10 seconds doesn't seem like a lot of time, but I promise you a lot can happen and a lot of people can die in about 10 seconds. It's not too out there to say that those 10 te seconds can be the difference between life and death in a tiny Scandinavian dwarf's eyes. But plus side is, is that you can destroy it manually and it will automatically complete building itself even when you die. So yay, Turp Tor, you go. Who cares if your father died? You just build yourself right back up and take revenge in the dead of night when no one suspects you to come back from the grave. His turret is super important to his kit, but so is his armor pack, so it'll be really nice to see how they fix that, and it's gone. They completely replaced it with a mini version of his previous ult, so if you were expecting to continue getting tanks and yada just from having the right champions on your side, you're sadly shit out of luck. Instead we got Overload, which lasts for 5 seconds with a cooldown of 12 seconds. Which if you ask me pisses me off, because when they turned Mercy's ult into an ability, they gave it a massive cooldown that is really annoying and takes forever. I know that Mercy's ultimate had a lot more of a game changing property in the game, and if they were to reduce it to 12 seconds there would be riots in the street, but I say fuck it, let the motherfucker burn. Anyway, so Overload grants 150 armor and increases your attack movement and reload speeds by 30%, so in other words it's lame as shit and I fucking hate it. Finally, his ultimate, which is a significant change from his original ultimate. For starters, it switches his weapon from the standard gun to his molten arm, or claw arm, or whatever it is. From this arm, he starts to spooge lava everywhere and make additional little brigittes all over the place. This lava bounces off the walls and ceilings in my hopes and dreams until it hits the ground where it stays for a pretty decent amount of time. It lasts for about 6 seconds and fires up to 10 molten globules that stay on the ground for about 10 seconds. They tend to do a basic damage of about 130 uh, to standard enemies that walk on them or get hit by them. And the damage increases to 190 to enemies that have armor like Bastion, Brigitte, Diva, Orisa, Reinhardt, Torbjorn, Winston, and Wrecking Ball. In other words, as you would suggest, Lava eats armor like a motherfucker. It's great. Torbjorn eats Lava. Lava eats armor. It's like a rock, paper, scissors situation. It's great. Anyway guys, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, let me know in the comment section below and I'd love to make some more for you. Uh, and I hope you guys like the new outro song. It was done by a lovely individual named Tressa and she deserves even more love and attention and, and care in the world. So, yeah, I wish she had a like Tumblr or something that I knew about so that I could link it in the description she might. So if I find it out, I'll uh, do that. But yeah. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.